Well, for many years, the threat from China to the United States has been growing. And for as many years, Joe Biden has been ignoring that threat. Now, Biden suddenly has a new position. Biden is deeply worried about China, he says. China is going to eat our lunch. Come on, man. They're not bad folks, folks. But guess what? They're not a they're, they're not, not they're competition for us. While Trump is tweeting, uh, China is making massive investments in new technologies, in artificial intelligence. You bet I'm worried about China. When it comes to taking on China first, let's invest in America. Let's build a united front of our allies to challenge Chinese abusive behavior. We need to rally half the world's economy to hold China accountable for their cheating. So, yes, that is a dramatic reversal, indeed a flip flop, at least unlike topics like abortion and immigration. Biden is this time flip flopping in the correct direction. But naturally, he is blaming the president for China's rise and not his for decades of negligence while holding high office. Senator Marco Rubio has been raising the alarm about China in Congress for a long time now, and he joins us tonight to assess. Senator, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. What do you make of the former vice president's change of heart on China? Well, I think he first he began in sort of what's a default position uh, in the Democratic Party that's you know, largely been taken over, at least in their base, by these radical progressives. And that default position is no matter what's going on wrong in the world, it's Donald Trump's fault. So you also see that in some of the coverage, by the way. It's almost like coverage that you read in some of these newspapers that, that, that is rooting for the U.S. to lose or blames the U.S. for uh, a lot of what China is doing and so forth. So that's what was embedded there at the front end of the first time he spoke about it. Is it, The rest of that clip, he goes on to say, but we're doing all the wrong things, and Trump is doing this wrong and that wrong. This is the first administration, the first administration uh, in a quarter century that's been willing to confront China. And frankly, it's had to take dramatic steps because it's taken so long to do anything that the challenge before us is dramatic. So I, I don't want to be crass about it, but I think it's true, and I think you know, having been in Washington a long time, that it is true, that a lot of people have benefited greatly from sucking up to China, have become, in fact, rich from yeah. kowtowing to China. Do you think that's part of it? Yeah, but it's, it's not crass. It's, it's accurate. It's the way it is. I mean, look, if you are a company, let's say you're the CEO or a major shareholder in a multinational, you want access to that market because you're going to make a lot of money over the next three to four years. And you're not even thinking or care about what it means to that company, not to mention the United States 20 years from now. And they, they used to march down here. I'm telling you, they used to march down here right to the White House, to Treasury, to Congress. And they would say, don't do this to China. We can work this out. There's a different way. Let's go to the W. TO, LET'S SEND THEM A REALLY STRONGLY WORDED LETTER TELLING THEM NOT TO DO THIS ANYMORE. BECAUSE THEY WERE MAKING MONEY OVER THERE AND THEY WANTED MARKET ACCESS. THEY, they DIDN'T CARE ABOUT WHAT HAPPENED TO yeah. AMERICA 10 YEARS FROM NOW. THEY DIDN'T EVEN CARE WHAT HAPPENED TO THEIR COMPANY 10 YEARS FROM NOW. THEY WOULDN'T BE THERE. THEY WANTED TO MAXIMIZE THEIR SHARES AND THEIR PROFITS RIGHT AWAY, EVEN IF IT MEANT DOING SOMETHING THAT WAS America, AGAINST AMERICAN NATIONAL INTEREST IN OUR FUTURE. DO, do YOU THINK that THE REST OF THE DEMOCRATIC CANDIDATES, THE ENTIRE FIELD, Almost all of them have been pretty aggressively pro-China, some very aggressively pro-China. Can they maintain that or will they have to follow Biden's lead now and change? You know, I don't know if they can maintain it. I would imagine that basically there's a lot of people in American politics today has gotten so crazy. There's a lot of people that basically say if Trump is forward, it's got to be a bad thing. And so obviously this yeah. um, now, look, there, I do think that taking on China, we have a lot of allies in the Senate that are Democrats that, that are for it. But I'm talking about now the political class, the activist class, whatever Trump is for, they're against. And, and that includes taking on China. You, you read it in the commentary. You know, where the, the, I read a commentary last week, not just on China, on Mexico. It was a commentary came out on Friday night in the Washington Post saying that Trump was about to mess up the 25 or 30, three decades of hard work with Mexico. And then about an hour later, the news comes out that Mexico's agreed to do all sorts of important things. That is the kind of derangement that has set in and is really not giving the American people an honest assessment of these challenges that are before us. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement uh, and, and nicely put. Senator, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Thank you.